Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's bright and early, daily discipline, mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. Let's get into our study group for warriors. We have a generation who curses their fathers and does not bless their mothers. I don't know when this started. It may have started with my generation or maybe even my parents, with the hippies. We, maybe we can blame this on postmodernism and on liberalism. I kind of noticed this when I was growing up, that kids who grew up in houses that were Christian or heavily religious, didn't have to be Christianity, it could be Jewish or Muslim, but kids who grew up with church in their house, a picture of their Lord on the wall, a Bible or a Torah laying out somewhere so you can see it. You're absolutely going to church on the weekend. That you're, no one's missing church. Those types of households they, where the, the, the parents were still together. They had dinner time. You went home for dinner. Not everybody had this upbringing. You may have had that kind of upbringing and think that's just normal. That's what all kids do, right? No, 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 no. Liberals don't raise their kids that way. Maybe we can blame it on atheism. Maybe we can blame it on postmodernism, a philosophy that kind of inspires people to tear everything down that has come before it, anti-tradition. We'll continually just rebuild everything anew, tear down the statues, tear down the buildings, tear down institutions, screw authority this mindless middle finger to the world, fuck the world kind of mentality. They don't even know why they're saying it. They have perfectly good lives. And we have a whole generation of little knuckleheads who don't listen to nothing. Little self-righteous fucking brats, overly emotional little babies having temper tantrums over nothing. They can't be told anything. You can't tell them anything. I know I sound like an angry old man. Maybe I am. You know, in tribal culture, the elders, the elders were the ones that made the rules, set the tone, enforced punishments, made the laws. The elders might have to go and have a little meeting somewhere off to the side and they tell the youngsters, hey, you guys scatter. You ain't invited to this. We got some stuff to talk about. And yeah, we might be talking about you. Maybe we need an elder meeting. This can't continue. We cannot allow the young people to be out of control as they are. It will destroy society. It will destroy the world. Some of you people who raise kids, you guys know this the best. What are we going to do about a generation of little self-righteous idiots who want to burn down the world? Food for thought. Let's move on to the next one. Well, I ran across probably one of the most anti-Semitic books that you could ever read by Martin Luther, The Reformation, not the civil rights leader. This is 1546, a long time ago. It's called Jews and Their Lies. You can find it on YouTube. It is horrible. If you're sensitive to anti-Semitism, this will piss you off, this will freak you out. This is Hitler times 10. You know, Hitler was reading this book, jacking off to it. So I've been studying anti-Semitism just because I've been curious since October 7th of why. Why does everybody hate Jews? Where do all these stereotypes come from? Where does all this anger come from? People have been angry at Jews for thousands of years. Since the first Christian, they've been angry. The Christians were angry at Jews. They hate Jews. The Christians have hated Jews since they started. The Muslims are no different. The, 
Christians seem to be angry at the Jews mainly because of a rejection of Jesus as the Messiah. There seems to be a lot of anger at Jews by Europeans, Christian Europeans, because Jews are a tight-knit, family-oriented culture. And they have different beliefs than regular people, right? <laughs> Not to otherize anyone, but Jews make up less than 1%, I think around 1% of the global population. They're such an incredibly extreme minority and people hate them so much as if they're a threat. You guys have these conspiracy theories, these Kanye West fucking conspiracy theories, how this extreme minority has somehow taken over the world. It's all such an incredible bunch of nonsense, and it's based on jealousy. Jealousy of a tight-knit, family-oriented culture with its own little beliefs that survives and, 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 and thrives, that has uplifted themselves. Blacks are pissed off at that. That's why blacks hate Jews. It's jealousy. That's why Al Sharpton and a lot of the ghetto blacks hate the Jews because the Jews pulled themselves up out of those same ghettos and moved across town and went and bought the building that they used to live in. Started businesses and sent their kids to college instead of to prison. There's no more Jewish mafia because they became successful. They don't need to do the crimes anymore. They send their, kid, their kids to become doctors, not gangsters. And some of you motherfuckers can't get over it. Let's move on to the next one. I fell into this weird rabbit hole of YouTube watching these prison channels. <laughs> these fucking prison channels, man, are hilarious. And it's all about like the California prison system for some reason. There's very few prison channels talking about like other states, the Michigan prison system. Ain't nobody making a prison channel talking about, you know, other states. There's it seems like what thousands of YouTube channels, at least hundreds of these tattooed up Mexicans in Pecker Woods and some blacks who are running their mouths continually, daily, snitching, giving names, giving locations, giving crimes that they've committed. You give that much information, you just snitched out a whole prison. And I don't care if you're given nicknames. You think a nickname saves a motherfucker? You give a nickname, a location of a prison. Oh, it was me and T Dog at Old Corcoran, and we smuggled a bunch of drugs in there. We were on the, the, the B War. We were in 4800 block, whatever. You just snitched them all out. There goes a fucking investigation and a, and a raid that you inspired. The prison channels are all snitches, every one of them. Every single prison channel is a snitch channel. Move on to the next one. The same messaging that we saw in the 50s is being repeated, except gender roles are being now reversed. So, we used to see a rather misogynistic message in the 50s uh, where women were painted as dumb weak, really only good for domestic use for cleaning and making babies. And it was a, a, it wasn't really accurate, some of that does exist, but we know that there's women out there who are strong and then they're not weak and they may work two and three jobs. They don't just sit home making sandwiches for their husband. But nonetheless, Hollywood and the media continually kind of painted this picture, this stereotype. Well, now that this, this has been reversed, but it's the same. The gender roles have been reversed and I've been noticing this. You may notice it too. When they have men in commercials or movies, TV shows, 
men are stupid, goofballs. They're often sitting on a sofa, doing nothing, eating snacks. They're really only good for fixing things or making babies. This is the Homer Simpson character. This is almost every single man that you'll see in any movie, in any TV show. We're even seeing this narrative of these working women. You see it repeatedly in commercials where there'll be a working, successful, educated, rational woman in a family scenario with, with kids and a husband, usually it's mixed race, and the husband will be an oaf who stays at home, a stay-at-home oaf. And then we're also seeing in a race of white men, any chance to cast a person of color is what they'll do. You're seeing very, very, very few white men in commercials, in TV. And when you do see white men, they're depicted as stupid or as evil. Or it's a coincidence. I'm just paying attention to conspiracies. There's nothing really there, huh? Who knows? Here's something controversial. I was hearing a a, a, a Christian evangelical pastor, sometimes I listen to that stuff, and he actually made a good point in between his prosperity preaching, trying to get people to put money in his plate so he could buy a new gold yacht. He actually made a good point, and he attacked the Muslims, so I'm going to attack some Muslims on here. I've been to the Middle East, I have Muslim friends, but I'm going to attack some of you. Find me one Muslim, find me one. This is what the pastor said, and I'm just repeating it. Find me one. Find me one. One. Just one Muslim. Somewhere. One. Anywhere in the world. Just one of you who isn't an anti-Semite. Find me one Muslim on earth who doesn't hate the Jews. Find me one Muslim on earth who doesn't support Hamas. Find me one Muslim on earth who doesn't support terrorism. Find me one Liberals are no different. Find one liberal. Find me one liberal. Just one liberal. Who doesn't support Palestine. Find me one liberal who says October 7th was fucked up. Find me one liberal who's willing to admit that Gaza and the Palestinians had their own state. You beg for a two-state solution. They had their own state. They were given it in 2005. Find me one of you who will admit the truth. Just one. Muhammad was a fucking pedophile. And liberals are a fucking death cult. And if you don't like it, shove it up your ass. You guys got me pissed off. Let's go to the next one. People are looking for meaning in their life. But right? Everybody's looking for meaning. Meaning and purpose. Here's a question by, uh, who, who asked this? I think it was Eric Weinstein. A brilliant guy. The guy's so smart. And he asked the interviewer, because they were talking about meaning, and he asked the interviewer rather bluntly, well, what kind of meaning are you looking for? And the interviewer was taken aback. And I had to philosophize on that. If you're looking for meaning, and someone asks you, what kind of meaning are you looking for? That might be hard to answer. Because we have this notion that life ought, it ought, put that in parentheses, it ought to have significance. It ought to have some sort of meaning and purpose to it, right? Well, if that's what you want, you want meaning and purpose, what kind of meaning and purpose do you want? Think about that. That's a good place to fucking start. Otherwise, you're searching around in the dark with your eyes closed. Here's something that I just got annoyed by earlier in the week. It tricked me at first. I got tricked. I got, I'm not perfect. I got tricked. So I'm at a Mexican restaurant. One of my favorite Mexican restaurants for lunch. It was on Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. They got a good taco meal. They got fucking great tacos. I eat those tacos so fast. 
even the waiter was just like, damn. And I was just like, man, your tacos are so good. I eat my fingers. My fingers get too close to my mouth. I'll eat my fingers off. They're, they're delicious. And I go there once a week. And this dude, big old motherfucker, military guy, he gets up, gives me a nod. You know, hello, citizen. And he's wearing his fatigues. And he goes up to pay for his food and he's got this wife. I knew it was his wife because she had a diamond ring the size of a fucking basketball. And while he's paying his, for the meal for both of them in his back turned, having a pleasant conversation with the, uh, the hostess or whoever it was that was running the cash register, his girl, she was so beautiful. One of the most beautiful women I think I've ever seen in my life. And I know that's a tall statement. She was definitely my type. She stood there the entire time staring at me, smiling with me. And I'm smiling back because she's the most beautiful chick I ever goddamn seen. And she definitely likes me. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I know when a chick is vibing on me and she was... She was vibing on me. She wanted Sky. Oh, she was getting all squishy with that big diamond ring. And her husband. What kind of slut bitch does that? Any woman who flirts with you while she's with her man is a dirty whore. <laughs> Just plain and simple. Have a good Sunday.